Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship. It's great to see everyone here today. Also want to welcome everyone joining us online today. If you're on Facebook, make sure to give a like to our feed and just share in the comments to let us know that you're with us today. Uh, today we continue our Fruit of the Spirit message series that we began last week. And we're looking at the second Fruit of the Spirit today, which is the Fruit of Joy. So uh, what does it mean to find our joy in the Lord? Good morning. We welcome everyone to the second Sunday after Pentecost. It is great to see you all this morning. As you are able, please rise and we begin our worship service with the opening hymn and the procession of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call and ordained servant of the world, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. to God on high.
be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is our true Son and rest. Help us to keep each day holy by receiving his word of comfort that we may find our rest in you. To live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that have the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have told before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful flesh to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. on the screen today and uh, do you see what's on the screen what is that it is a happy face and and there there's a there's a very very special name for these happy faces that uh, the big kids have on their phones sometimes and what they're called is these are called emojis anyone ever heard of an emoji I think there was, there was actually a movie called the Emoji Movie. I think it was really bad, though. Uh, but that's an emoji that we use when we are happy, right? What are some things that make you happy? What, what makes you happy? Does a birthday make you happy? Uh, birthdays are a good thing that make you happy. Uh, summer break, that we're, there's, there's no more school. That, that's something that, that's happy when we go on vacations and uh, don't have schoolwork for the, the summer. That's something that's probably pretty happy. How about uh, when your parents get you a special treat, like ice cream? Does that make you happy? I think that, that, that's something that's happy. Well, I've got a, another uh, emoji. And uh, what's this emoji? That's a sad, that's a sad emoji. You ever been sad? Yeah. There's sometimes that, that everyone gets sad from time to time when something bad happens. Maybe we, we fall down, we trip and we fall and we, we hurt ourselves and that's something that's sad. Maybe, maybe a friend said something mean that wasn't kind and that's another thing that can make us sad. There's lots of things in life that make us sad. So sometimes we're happy and sometimes we are sad. But we're talking today in my, my sermon that I'm giving today, I'm going to be talking about joy. And uh, we talk about the joy that we have in Jesus. And the Apostle Paul, 
he says this. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, I will say it again. He repeats it. He says, I will say it again. Rejoice in the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again. Rejoice in Jesus. So that no matter if we're happy, no matter if we're sad, we know that God loves us. And that he's always present in our lives. He's always going to help us. We always remember that Jesus died on the cross for our forgiveness. And also that he is alive. That he is risen from the dead. And because he lives that we too may live a new life. And that's something special that we can always have God's joy in our hearts. So let's pray. Uh, everyone, if you will repeat after me. Dear Jesus, and thank you for all the fruit of the Spirit. And today... We thank you for the fruit of joy. Help us to rejoice in you always. Every day of our lives. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for coming up today. And we stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of John, beginning at the 16th verse. Jesus said, a little while you will see me no longer, and again in a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says, a little while and you will see me, not see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So where they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and wo no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing from me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith now with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell. Please be seated.
Well, we've come to a new month, the month of June, and that means we introduce today a new verse of the month. And since our message series is the fruit of the Spirit, our verse of the month today, this uh, month is going to be Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which lists for us the fruit of the Spirit. So let us recite these words together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So here we have the fruit of the Spirit, and we are taking one fruit each week. So last week, we on Holy Trinity Sunday, we looked at the fruit of love. For God so loved the whole world that He sent His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And today, we look at the second fruit of the Spirit, and that is the fruit of joy. And as I shared with the children, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And it's not enough just to say it once. He says, again, I will say it, rejoice in the Lord. So we have the fruit of the Spirit. We have the fruit of love. We have the fruit of joy. The fruit of peace. The fruit of patience. The fruit of kindness. The fruit of of goodness, the fruit of gentleness, the fruit of faithfulness, and last but not least, the fruit of self-control. And as Paul says, against such things there is no law. So the question that I have for you this morning, in fact, just as a reminder in your worship folder today, there is an outline for today's message, and if you want to take notes and to follow along, you're welcome to take that out and, uh, again, follow along with today's message. And at the top of that, you'll see a question. And the question is this, to ponder, true or false, God wants me to be happy. Ponder that for a moment. True or false? God wants me to be happy. We're talking about the fruit of the spirit of joy today. And certainly there is a relationship between joy and happiness. But just maybe, just maybe here, there is a little more than meets the eye. So often as human beings, we are emotional beings. And we make our choices, we make our decisions based upon our emotions, based upon how we feel. And I shared with the kids the emojis. Happiness is an emotion. And it, it drives many of our pursuits in life. I came across the picture here. This was a billboard that was put up a, a number of years ago that created quite a bit of controversy. And it says, life is short, get a divorce. It was put up by a, a divorce lawyer, as you might imagine. But what, what it is portrayed here is, well, if your marriage is not making you happy, then, well, leave it behind and, and go and do that which is going to make you happy. That which is going to bring you pleasure. That which you want to do. I, I once was meeting with, with another pastor, and, and he shared with me that he had someone come to his, his office and, and talked about this very thing, that he was considering leaving his wife and getting a divorce because, well, she didn't make me happy anymore. And, and sometimes you'll, you'll hear couples, they'll have an, an argument, and, and one of the spouses will say, well, I just don't love you anymore, that I've, I've fallen out of love. And the idea is you don't bring me pleasure like you once brought me pleasure. So many things in life are driven by what brings us pleasure. Think of the, the Declaration of Independence. 
that, that we have certain inalienable rights, and uh, among those are what? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So much the pursuit of happiness in so many ways has justified the pursuit of sin. Because what happens is we get in our mind that God just wants me to be happy. True or false? The answer is false. God wants more for me than simply to be happy. God wants more for you than happiness, which is a cheap imitation of the real deal. The point here is that God doesn't want you to be happy. God wants you to have joy. Joy that is found in Him, trusting in Him, believing in Him, following him no matter what the cost is because that you know that something greater is in store for you in him let's look at the definition of happiness happiness is having a sense of confidence or satisfaction with a person a situation an arrangement or an experience hap Venus based on the old English word hap, which means chance. We also get our word happen and happenstance. Look at this, this definition. It's confidence or satisfaction that is based upon a person. But what if that person changes or is taken from our lives? Or it's based upon a situation. And we know how situations change. I may have money one day and the next day the market may crash. And the money that I had today I don't necessarily have tomorrow. It comes and it goes. I may find this wonderful house, beachfront property, and then, well, what happened yesterday? Yesterday was the beginning of hurricane season, and a hurricane comes and wipes out my house. Or I, I'm, I'm physically fit, and I, I, I'm feeling well, but then I get a diagnosis from the doctor that, that robs me of my health. Or what about, you know, the clothes? I buy some nice clothes, and I'm feeling good about myself. So a nice pair of shoes, maybe some fancy jewelry, but then the credit card bill shows up in the, in the mail. Happiness is based upon a situation, and our situations change. Our arrangements change. Our experiences change in life. And there are days when the sun is shining down on me, and I'm going to be happy, and there's also going to be days when the rain comes and, comes and I'm not going to be quite as, as happy. Here we need to know this, that God's purpose, God's purpose for us, it says here the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy, to rob us of our joy. That's Satan there at work. But God, Jesus says my purpose is to give you, he doesn't say happiness, but something more here. A rich and a satisfying life. Joy, it goes beyond our circumstances. Because our joy is found in Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote the letter to the Philippian churches. And... It is sometimes called the epistle of joy. And it's most amazing that of all the letters that Paul wrote, that the book of Philippians is called the epistle of joy. The thing is, is that the apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians from a prison cell. And the ancient prisons would make modern day prisons look like the Ritz-Carlton. And yet 19 times... In four short chapters, 
19 times Paul says either rejoice or uses the word joy. That's why we call it the epistle of joy. And he says this, looking at the second paragraph here. Yes, he says, I will, what? He says, I will rejoice, even though I'm in prison, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, he says here, this situation, this circumstance, which would normally not bring a person joy, Paul has a confidence and he has a faith in Jesus that this even though I may not understand it, even though I may not know how, he believes <coughs> and trusts in his God that this will turn out for his, for his deliverance. So joy. Here's the definition of joy. Joy is a positive confidence possessed by knowing and trusting God no matter, even if I find myself in prison, no matter what the circumstances may be, I find my confidence and my trust in Him. With that said, I want to talk about three joy robbers. Three things that steal our joy. And the first is this. The first is selfishness. It says in the book of James, where there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Selfishness. Uh, if you go boating, you know that when you drive a boat, what is left behind is what's called the wake. And there are certain places where you drive a boat where there is a no-wake zone. That you have to drive the boat slowly through that area because if you drive fast, the wave will increase. The wake will increase from the boat, potentially destroying that which is left behind you. And selfishness, that, that is, is leaving that destructive wake. It's doing what I want to do regardless of what it does to other people. Selfishness. It destroys our relationships and it robs joy from our lives. Even though we may be doing what we think we want to do. Our satisfaction studies have shown that satisfaction in life is based upon the quality of our relationships in life. Sometimes you got to take out the trash, right? Tonight's trash night at our, our home and that's one of the uh, responsibilities that our boys have. And there's a lot of times where they don't, they don't want to take out the trash. I, I admit there's sometimes I don't want to do the chores that want to be done. But sometimes you need to do the things that you want to do. If you always did what you want to do in the moment, you're never going to find true and lasting joy. Sometimes they're setting aside what I want for something that is more. Another thing that robs us of our joy, it is bitterness. Hebrews 12, verse 15, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, that by it many have become defiled. Bitterness is a choice, just like forgiveness is a choice. But so often we hold on to bitterness and withhold forgiveness from others out of anger, out of resentment, for whatever reason that it may be. But bitterness, when it lives inside you, will do no good thing. The third thing that robs us of joy is fear. 1 John 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love, it says, casts out all fear. Uh, acronym for fear. Fear is this. It is false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. But fear it will keep us from trying new things. It will keep us from taking risks. It will keep us from dreaming big. Because what fear does, it it has us focus on our problems rather than focusing on our God. Remember Peter 
when he was in the boat and there was Jesus walking on the water and Jesus calls him out of the boat. And what does Peter do? He walks on water. I find that the most amazing. Not only did Jesus walk on water, but Peter walked on water as well. As long as his focus, as long as he kept his gaze on Jesus, everything was good. But soon, it didn't take long, he began to focus not on Jesus, but he was focused on the wind and the waves and the storm that was all around the boat. And as soon as he took his focus off of Jesus, what happened? He began, he began to sink. Fear. It will rob us of our joy. And I don't want to leave you with the things that rob us of our joy. Uh, I want to encourage you in your joy as well. So as you think about joy, consider it what it is that you are consuming. Consider what you are consuming. And this is not just food, but in, in terms of life. What are you consuming in terms of what you read? And what you, you, you look at while you're surfing the internet. What is it that you watch on TV? What is it that you listen to on a daily basis? Is it things that feed your soul and give you joy or pull you down? Also, consider the people around you. Consider the people that you surround yourself with. Now, you can't do anything about, you know, those who are part of your, your family. You're, you're related to those people, and, 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 and you are naturally connected to certain people in your lives. But there's also other people that you choose to associate with. And the people that you choose to associate with, uh, is it people that draw you closer to God? Or is it people who draw you further away from God? Is it, is it people who elevate your joy? Or is it people who bring you down? Which leads us to the third thing. Consider how you speak. Consider how you speak. Think about just how you speak about other people. Do you speak about other people in a way that is positive? I mean, maybe you're around a, a, a person that they really can't say anything good about other people typically. Uh, oftentimes they, they, they're, 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 they're filled with, with complaint. And you kind of wonder, it's like, well, when I'm not around that person, what is that person saying about me? And, and ask the question today, are you that person? How do you speak about others? How do you speak about the situation that you, you find yourself in? Think about Paul. You know, he's there in, in prison, and he could have spoken one way about it. Filled with negativity. But the, the way that Paul spoke about his, his, his time in prison was th that he, he'd spoke in faith and he spoke in trust. He says, I don't really quite understand all of this, why this is happening to me. This isn't the, the greatest situation that I find myself in, but I trust in God that, that he is going to use this for his good purpose. Do you speak in faith or do you speak in doubt? And it says that faith comes by hearing. And sometimes the words that we hear are the words that we speak from our own mouth. Have you heard about self-talk? What is the story that you are rehearsing in your mind? You, you know that, that worry is, is a form of, of prayer in, in many ways. Instead of focusing on God, you're, you're focused in on your worries. And it's just ruminating in your mind over and over and over again. What is the story that you are telling yourself? Are, are you you're saying that, that your, your problems, your trials, your challenges, the things that you're facing in life are greater than your God or that your God is greater than all of those things? Number four, check your gratitude. Check your gratitude. A thankful heart has a way of elevating our joy. An ungrateful heart tends to rob us of our joy. Speak your gratitude. Express your gratitude. Don't just keep it inside. Express your gratitude for the people that are around you. Most importantly, express your gratitude to God, our creator. Praise God 
from whom all blessings flow, to recognize that I have nothing in my life that comes apart from Him. Most importantly, give Him thanks for all that He has done. Most importantly, the gift of salvation and forgiveness that was won in Jesus our salvation, it's not our doing. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of works so that not one of us can boast. It is God's work alone. And we, he deserves all thanks, all praise, all glory, all worship. Because he makes all of the difference. That I can rejoice in the Lord through whatever. And I'm going to say it again, and I'll keep saying it. Rejoice. As we continue our worship, one of the ways in which we rejoice and we give thanks to our God is through giving Him the gift of our offerings. Uh, and we bring our tithes and offerings before Him now at this time. Let us stand now as we pray for the whole people of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, hear our prayer this day for the sake of Jesus and the precious blood shed on the cross. We come humbly before you in recognition that we do not deserve anything from you. But through faith and baptism, we have been made your children. And it brings you good pleasure when we, your children, make our requests known to you. Help us to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. We pray for your name to be hallowed. Guard our tongues to speak that which is noble and true. May the words we use and the choices we make bring glory and honor to you. We pray that the lives we live would make you famous. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, nations are in uproar. Kingdoms, religions, political parties, races, genders stand in conflict. We more often focus on what divides rather than what unites. We pray for this day 
that there would be no more borders, no more flags, no more divisions, but that we would be one people in Christ, living in unity under the authority and the full reign of your kingdom ushered in for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy. May your desires be carried out. You are Father who knows best. You have a perspective of eternity that we cannot see. We know that if we knew what you knew and saw what you saw, that we would want exactly the same thing as you want. So Lord, give us the desire to know your will, to discern your will, to eagerly open up the scripture and to seek first your will above all else. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for provision for daily bread. In our nation, for those who are out of work, for those who are underemployed. But we pray especially for those in many parts of the world who live in destitute poverty and live with hunger and the diseases of poverty. We pray against apathy of their plight from those of us who have been blessed and that your church would be faithful in caring for the widow, the orphan, the prisoner, the refugee, the bullied, and all others who are marginalized. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins, our pride, our selfishness, our greed, our lust, our prejudice. We pray for healthy and fulfilling relationships with others. Help us to be proactive in offering love and forgiveness for the sake of reconciliation. Help us be quick to listen and slow to speak. Lord, in your mercy. And lead us not into temptation. Help us to pursue righteousness and live holy lives. Give us wisdom to set appropriate boundaries to avoid poor choices. And when the day of decision comes, give us a rich measure of your Holy Spirit to be a people of integrity and of principle. Lord, in your mercy. And into your hands, Lord, we commend all of this for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit of his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole world rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, it was on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to, to them, saying, Drink this cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us greet one another with the peace of the Lord.
Receive now the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As a reminder of the reason why we exist as a church, let us speak our vision statement together. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love, joy, and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our worship has ended. Let our, let us, let our, our service now begins. Let us go in peace. <laughs> 